Hello everyone. Today I will go and explain 2D arrays, okay, in using Visual Studio and C++. So first I would like to visualize it. What is a 2D array? Um, before that, let's go to single dimensional array, okay? I'm using this one. So when you're creating an array of integer, for example, um, just if I want to keep only my score, I have, for example, 10 assignments or something like that. I will be using this 10. Right, so it will uh, have now in here. I will have ten different face allocated next to each other. So if we remember, the index number will be here the zero, and there will be one, and this will be nine. So when we add up this, and it will be ten numbers. And this area, which is I'm going to put here one red box. Is not belongs to us, so it could be someone else's. And C plus plus doesn't check it. If you go out of index, which you are trying to reach this one, when you try to reach the score ten, this will be, you know, undeterministic behavior. It you may, uh, you know, crash the code or you may read some junk data. It may ruin your code. So we don't know the result. How about two dimensional arrays? Two dimensional array is, for example, if we are going to read some text file. Let me create one text file. That's a simple text file. Uh, this is, for example, uh, these are the days. For example, uh, this is um, January 13, or just give me not another number, 10. Then I, uh, for example, bought uh, 100 breads, okay? And because I'm running some restaurant. And January 12th, I'm keeping these numbers, and I bought a six bread and and for 15 i bought i don't know uh, 99 bread i bought so this is my input data and this can go on for example let me say i'm keeping on the monthly uh, i can have at most 31 days so i can go till 31 days uh, and 31 data i need i don't need more than that okay and uh, so we can go on and let me put here for some 21st uh, of January, I bought uh, 88 bread. So this is my input file. Okay, I am going to read this data from here. So I need an, uh, just one array, now a two dimensional array. Let's first imagine what is happening. I would like to keep an array like this and each. Uh, line has two data i will be drawing like this so it will become much easier for me so we will have two data in here okay so the first box gonna be the day of the month and this is the number of breads i'm going to i'm buying okay it will continue like that and this will be the my last element if the last element was the 21, it, let's assume that is the last element. This will be 21, and I will have 88 bread. So in C++, we represent this like this integer. Um, let me say bread. I will just say bread. So bread and day, actually. Day and bread may be better. Day and bread I am holding. So how many days? 31 at most I can have. And how... Uh, how many data i'm going to hold two data i'm going to hold so the first one will be my day second one will be uh, my bread count so i have two data i'm holding each row but i have 31 rows so let me go back and put some numbers some things here this is the index zero this is like an elevator and this is one and this is 30 because 30 plus this one is 31. So it is, I, I'll give you an elevator example because these are like an apartment floor. Each floor has two rooms. So when I push the elevator button zero, if I want to go to the first room, I will just put uh, here zero, another zero here. If I want to go to the, another, the other second room, I will put here one. So if I wanted to go to the, for example, 30, uh, one just go down here and if i want to visit the first one 21 and uh, second one is with one i will be using 
So if I want to access and print out the data in one of them, I'll be using the name of the variable. Um, let me extend this a little bit. So, and then if I want to access the last element, 30, and if I want to go into the second room, uh, I will be using one because the first room represented with one. So I can print this and I can also do assignment. I can say day red equal to uh, not like this, of course. I need to give the location. Uh, for example, I am going to put here, uh, which is the one, and the location is zero. And I'm going to put here, which is what is this? 12. I'm going to put 12 there, okay? I test semicolon on both of them, but not, this is not real environment. So I will be putting here 12, just assignment. If this one, if I want to print this one, it will print 30. One, which will print 88, right? This will print this, uh, what is that? This yellow part, this will print. Okay, so let's go back and write some code with Visual Studio. I'm going to open my Visual Studio. Um, I will create a new project. And uh, do we have console application and hello world? Yes, here it is. So I will just say 2D array live. Okay. I hit enter. It takes some time to come. Hopefully, yes, it came. Let's clear all unnecessary stuff here. So I generally use using namespace. This is the taste uh, of mine. I like this way because I don't want to put a lot of this kind of stuff. And here it is. I have just to the array. I don't have any data file. I'm going to right click and add new item and it will be utility text file. Okay. So I'm going to use, I will just say red data. Okay. So I will have this first one is the rows. You remember? And, and days, and then these are the number of reds. So I will put here 10, 200, 12. I don't know, shall I have the same number? 12, 86, 86, enter. Another one is 15, 99, 99. Do you think this much is enough for the demonstration sake? Maybe I'll just put the last one, 21, 88. Let's have just four days, okay, of bread. So when we are implementing, so we don't need to deal with a lot of stuff. If it will automatically read, uh, that's, that's it. So. I, I don't know. We will figure out when whether he this is saved. And let me put this one here. So you can see this is the data we are going to read. So I need some you know array, two dimensional array. I will just say day bread. First data is day, the second one is the number of bread. So the size is I have 31 days in a month. This is monthly. And I will be holding two data. So one in 31 days, you remember, 31 days we have, 31 floor, which is the number of rows, these are rows, and second one is number of columns, I have two. So this is like a hotel with two rooms, and uh, it has a 30 floor. So you can have maybe many, many rooms, if, you, if your hotel is holding so much data, maybe 10, so you can say instead of two, you will put 10 there. And if it is a 100th floor apartment in, in Manhattan, it's a hotel, so you will put here 100. So it depends on your number of rows, number of floors, and number of rooms you can think of that, okay? I have two rooms uh, in this case. So what's gonna happen is here, let me get rid of uh, this one. Actually, let's keep it, and I will just say end of program. So we can see this text at the end. So I will hit here, clear this one. So I will be reading from this file, right? Red data txt so for that what i do i need i need what file stream is it yes file stream i need so i will be opening this with input file stream this one and i will be using tin again instead of c in you know c in you read from the console i will be using file in i am reading from file so i will directly open this file i'm not gonna move into the second step and i can open so the name is bread data.txt just we created a second ago this one right here it is so we can check uh, you know if 
10 is open and then uh, we can move on or we can say if not open we can print something so we don't need to go on we will just say return as return one whatever we can return zero and see out input file cannot be found cannot be found okay just to inform user we cannot this is a good practice but my focus is today erase right to the erase so i will be reading from this the file is open i can use while loop because i would like to read till the end when i am reading i should be using while because i don't know uh, the size i mean data how many data i have so i will be using while loop but if uh, the data you know we have 31 2 when i am uh, looping if the all the data is filled up i will be using for loop is meaningful when i use a certain size here so i will be using while uh, it is not file in end of file so i will be reading all of them okay not end of file i'll be reading uh, all the content into this day bread this one so i when i'm accessing it as you remember i need to have two parameters the row count and this one each of them is representing each of these boxes so first one i will be accessing the zeroth floor and and the zeroth uh, what is that a room which is the first room actually and the index one which is the second room i will be accessing so i'll be reading this 10 and i'm going to put into the zero zero one so for this i can i cannot hard code right because i will be looping so i will be read one integer i will say row or if you want, I can uh, let's say row is better, better I believe. But it will start from zero uh, because I need to initialize it. So I'm going to put into the row, which is the zeroth row currently. And I will be putting into the first data into the zeroth uh, room. So I can do this uh, because, uh, I mean, I, this is going to read, but I have, I'm going to read pin. And I will be using this, right? Because I'm reading from file this one. And I'm going to put... So to make sure I read it correctly, I can print out if you want directly to the console whether I read it correctly. And let's do this for the second one. I'm just going to copy and paste. I'm in the still in the first floor, which is the zeroth index, and I'm going to put into the second room, which is the number of bread, into 200. And this is the day I put, and I, this is printing out. This is not a good co for formatting, but I just wanted to show you. I am reading it and printing it to the console. And what, what is next I need to do is I need to go into the second row, which is the second floor, uh, in order to, uh, you know, put some data uh, into the second floor next time when I'm reading. So this is 0 and 1. Of course, I should be using for loop here. Uh, this is just for simplicity. Let's debug this. I'll just hit F10. And code uh, black screen is coming. So I will be doing this so you can see the code over there and i should pass here pass file is open so we didn't see anything so we read the first one and you are going to print it 10 is printed so i don't use new line or something like that you will see 20 next to it so 20 which is 200 right 200 you just next to it it printed so we will move to the row plus plus and move up and you will see 12 next to it of course and then 86 next to it it will continue like this till the end of the file till the end of the row so we are done with this i read 88 and it quit as you see let's stop here and till this one go back here and i will be putting here to make it nicer not here and line right i should be putting here just the space maybe uh like the same format and here and line for printing purposes so instead of this, I can use for loop here. For what is that for? Because I have zero and one for starting from zero and less than two, which will include zero and one. It automatically, if I have many rows, this is not a good way of coding. Uh, I can tell you for this one. These are magic numbers, so we don't uh, suggest you use these magic numbers, and it's not a good practice. I will fix that later on. So we have everything we just put. So let's print out all of them at once, okay? Let me run this once again. You will see the exact output like this. If you compare, we have the same output. We have nicely. So what I would like to use, I mentioned at the very beginning, we should use for loops to 
access uh, this. So I will be creating two for loops, okay? And like this, I did. I didn't put the everything yet. Just the for loops, nested for loops. I can access. So because the first one will be the row, it will be in my elevator button, and second one will be door number zero and one. Currently, so I will be just starting integer i equal to zero, and i is less than. Um, what is the, I will be using this one, okay? Because uh, even though the, my size is 31, but I am not using all of them, I don't want to print unnecessary junk data, okay? So I will be just saying I++. plus plus. Let's see. I'm a little bit coding fast. And let's see whether it's, we don't have any problem. So the second thing is I'm going to just copy and paste, but this time I will be using J, uh, which represent the column. So this is generally the convention. We use I, J, K. This is a convention. It is not an order of anything, any, or God, or something like that. So it is just uh, the rule of practice, common practice we use. So I will be just printing out the content, right? Let me put here one C out to separate that. So printing the day and red so backslash and. So we will be printing all this stuff in, in, in here. So I'll be just using. Let's let's cheat from here. I'm just going to copy this one. Instead of row, I will be using I. Instead of this one, I will be using J. So J will be at most, not this is row, right? This should be two because I have at most two here. So it will start from zero. J is less than two, which means zero or one, if it's possible. And I will continue till the row, which is the last one we read. So if you wonder what is the row, you can print out after uh, this one. We can print how many uh, rows we have, how many days we are holding. So let me print actually here. I'll just say row, and then I will put here days. Okay, so how many days we have? But it will start from zero, one, two. It goes on. But you remember last time we incremented and we quit. So it should be giving us the correct count. Let's run it and see. If it's not, we will do something. So it is. Because we have end line here, it is printing four days. This is printing the all day bread. This is working fine, but this is not the same format. But we have the same data. So for that, we can use some trick to print everything next to each other. Uh, um, how do we do this? We don't need this one here, right? We can put some space here. So I will print the first one, and I will print here end line. Uh, I believe this should work fine with us which is okay we have one unnecessary space but doesn't matter so as you see we access the same data this is good so we know how to put data this is we are reading from file but we could have read uh, from we can ask user to enter in, with c in but i am this time i'm reading from file so hope this is helping you so what do we have here what have you we have done is we have array a two dimensional array it could be several dimensions and uh, we reach uh, we have 30 day 31 days in a month and these are the what day of the month and the, these are the number of breads we are buying so we can continue so what can what else we can use these things we can use it this uh, several things like you know if you can have students and these are the exam scores okay the midterm one midterm two or homework one homework two homework three homework four and then you would like to hold for the first student and second student third student so this will represent the student names so all these things possible you can use in different ways different data but the uh, one thing with the uh, if you look at you can hold on you this exactly the same data type in you cannot put here you know some name and then here some uh, uh for example this is uh, account owner's name and this is account owner's balance and this is address you cannot hold like that uh, this uh, integer has on single type here of course if we know the object oriented program if you move you can create a class and then that you can do many other things or structure you can use instead of int you can have your custom data type abstract data type and you can do that so hopefully this is uh, be useful for you and you'll like it and this is that's it thank you for watching it have a good one